Hello everybody, welcome to chapter 2, the Canadian healthcare system. In this chapter, Canadian healthcare system, basically we discuss a little bit about the past history of the Canadian healthcare system. At the same time, we focus on the role of the local government or the provincial government or the federal government. They are afford to collect the taxes and pay for our health care expenditure to the hospitals and long-term cares, even in the community settings. And the another significant uh, part of our discussion today here in this chapter is how the Canadian health care system is being changing from one scenario to other scenario and how this support workers' role are being more important every day. How the scope of practice as a support worker, we are supposed to be very much competent in providing the care from our part. It has become very important now. Canada's National Health Insurance System or Medicare ensures that all Canadians have access to quality health care, no matter which part of the country they live in. All these Canadians, they are entitled to get quality health care within this Canada's health care system. The system has ensured that all Canadians, they deserve, they are entitled to get quality health care. And for that, who is paying the money? It uses the provincial, territorial, and federal taxes to pay for the care. We get the care, they pay for the care. It is the tax money. And support workers have increasingly important role within Canada's changing health care system. We are providing basic care, fundamental care to our client, no matter what setting we find them. Maybe in the hospital, in the long-term care homes, in the client's their own home, which we call the community. Not does not matter where they live, but our role is increasingly important. We have to provide them quality health care as the system demands. Let's talk a little bit about the evolution of Canada's healthcare system. How this Canada's healthcare system developed? What was the beginning of the Canadian healthcare system? Originally, individuals paid their own hospital or doctor's bill in Canada. That time, there was not universal healthcare benefit for the people. Individuals who go to the hospital, they used to pay the amount. If they could not afford to pay, they went to the charity organizations and those charity organizations, they could pay for them. And the name of the charity organization could be VON, Victoria's Order of Nurses, a Red Cross, it's a Red Cross Society. They were the charity organization they used to pay. When there was a Great Depression in 1930s, Great Depression, the era of Great Depression, when in the 1930s, Many people who were ill or had disabilities, they depend on family members because they could not afford care. At that time, during the Great Depression period of 1930s, people, they depend on the family members. So basically, the concept is those who could afford financially, they could get good health, they could get good care, medic medical facilities, otherwise not. In 1947, Saskatchewan had the first 
In 1947, Saskatchewan has the first public insurance plan. This is very important for us. Saskatchewan, that's a one of the provinces in Canada, they have the first public in health insurance plan that cover the hospital services of the people. It's 1947. Similarly, another developmental uh, important development happened in 1961. Ten provinces in Canada and two territories agreed to provide inpatient hospital care. Inpatient means when the patient is staying in the hospital. Inpatient hospital uh, care, care cost, were split between the federal and provincial government. See, from the very beginning, from 1961, the government started taking responsibility for the public health. The federal government and the provincial government. This provincial is the provincial local government, federal is the national government. These two government, they started taking care. They started uh, supporting financially and they split the cost of the hospital stay in patient hospital care. Another milestone was there 1972. What happened in 1972, insurance extended, insurance, their the public health care ex insurance extended to cover medical services even outside the hospital. After outside the hospital means when the patients are discharged and they send back to the home, even the in the, in the, during the home stay when they are discharged from the hospital, their medical services was covered. Now, we are talking about the current healthcare system. So what are the changes the current healthcare system has in comparison to the past? There is a formation of Canada Health Act Canada Health Act. Please uh, go to your book, page number 24. There are five very important points. There is comprehensiveness, universality, portability, accessibility, and public administration. What do you mean by comprehensiveness? What is the comprehensiveness? Let me explain. Comprehensiveness is the insurance plan must pay for medically necessary services in a hospital all necessary drugs supplies and diagnostic tests are covered a range of necessary services provided outside a hospital are also covered it's called comprehensiveness once a client is admitted in the hospital a patient is admitted in the hospital all the cost of the hospital and even after the discharge, the financial, the cost of the, the, uh, the treatment is covered. Now the second point, it goes to universality. What do you mean by universality? Let me explain. Every permanent resident or the citizen of Canada, of any province or territory is entitled to receive the insured healthcare services provided by the plan on similar terms and condition. Without any discrimination, all these people, every permanent resident or the citizen of in Canada, they get those facility, healthcare service provided by the plan, according to the Canada Health Act. Let me Go to the third point, portability. What do you mean by portability? A portability means people can keep their health care coverage even if they are unemployed, 
change job, they relocate between the provinces and territories, or they travel within the Canada or abroad. However, if they are moving, it is their responsibility to inform their provinces or territory and go to register with their provinces or territory. That's making of the new health card. It is updating their health card. This is a portability. So in simple language, it no matter which, which province you live, you are still covered for the health. And accessibility, that is our fourth point today. This is very important. And the fourth point, what do you mean by accessibility? Accessibility is that people can receive medically necessary services regardless of their income, their age, their health status, their gender, geographical location, and additional charges for insured services are not permitted. They don't have to pay certain additional charges. Once they belong to any part of Canada, they are entitled to get those services no matter what health status, gender, or background they have. They have the access of those healthcare facility that is covered by accessibility. And public administration. What is this public administration? Who does the administrative activities there? Public administration means the insurance plan must be run by the public organization on a non-profit basis. The public organization must be accountable to the citizen and to the government of the province or territory. It is the public organization. They have to take the responsibility of supervising them, administrating them, and so on. So please, I encourage you to go to page number 24 of your textbook, box number 32, and read in detail. Now we are talking about the condition of the First Nation, the Native Canadians. The responsibility of the First Nation and the, the types of First Nation, there are different First Nation, group of First Nation, Métis and Inuit peoples. Health is shared by federal, provincial and territorial governments and Aboriginal organizations. These are the native Canadians health also, health care also uh, provided. They are also provided as we get. Uh, their health is also insured by the government, federal, provincial, and territorial government. Public health services are generally, public health services are generally delivered at the provincial, territorial, or municipal levels. The Federal Public Health Agency of Canada, FPHAC, acts as a focal point for disease prevention, for disease preve prevention and control, and control for the emergency response to different outbreaks, outbreaks of infectious disease. Certain outbreaks like Spanish virus, Middle Eastern virus, SARS, bird flu, and so on. Coronavirus, etc. Federal role. In Canadian healthcare system, let's clarify about what is the federal role. Means what is the the main government, the central government, what role they play. They administer the Canada Health Act. They are supervising Canada Health Act. How the Canada Health Act is giving quality health care, providing quality health care, it administers. Deliver health care to a specific group, people, who are the specific group of people? They deliver the health care to a specific group of people. People living on reserve. 
They are the First Nation people, Inuit people, Inuit people, member of the Canadian forces. The Canadian forces, they live in the different places for the safe, um, for protecting Canada, for the safeguard of the country and the Royal Canadian Mountain Police Force RCMPs and veterans and inmates of the federal jails. Those who are in the jails, their health is also being insured by the Canadian government. So these are the major area the federal government plays to ensure these people, like the people in the reserve, reserves uh, are the First Nation people and Inuit peoples, again, another type of uh, native uh, Canadians, member of the Canadian force, RCMP, veterans and inmate of the federal jails. Their health care system, their health care facility are insured by the federal government. They develop and carry out government policy and programs that promote health and prevent the disease. Basically, their main role is to promote health and prevent the disease. What is there is a quotation in healthcare. Prevention is better than cure. If you prevent from disease or disease process, this is better than cure because curing is very costly. To cure it, the whole treatment process takes place. Transfer tax money to provinces and territories to share the cost of medical care. This is the role of the federal government. They transfer the tax money to the provinces, from the federal government to the provincial government, from Ottawa to Toronto, and territories to share the cost of medical care of the people. This is how this federal government of Canada, they play a very, very significant role to ensure the health, the quality, care of Canadians' health. Federal roles continues, transferring the tax money to the provinces and territories to share the cost of health care services. They share. Share means financially supporting the cost. They are paying the cost. That's why we are not paying. The government is paying our cost. Again, they are also prohibiting services providers, service providers from billing clients extra charges and user fees. Nobody in Canada, they can override the laws and service provider from billing extra client extra charges. Nobody can get extra charge for the health care. They get the charge according to the rule or law. They don't have to, usually they don't have to pay for so many conditions because the health card covers their cost. Now let's talk about health care delivery. Basically, there are three types of healthcare delivery system in Canada. Healthcare delivery system in Canada. It has been practiced. It is called primary, secondary, and tertiary. Let's pronounce the word once again. It's called tertiary. Healthcare delivery, primary. So what is the primary health care delivery? What do you mean by primary? It's a fundamental. It's very, very basic. The first point of contact with the health care system. The primary is the first point of contact. The first point of contact with the health care system. And people go to the health care system. They go to the hospital and they get the treatment. Secondary is when they go to the hospital, they, the doctors and the nurses, they perform certain assessment. They try to find out assessment and different diagnostic procedure take place. And the treatment procedure take place. 
and preventive services preventive preventing certain habits preventing certain um, disease process through the medicines and all other things associated with more complex medical issue and when the secondary is more complex medical issue that is in the hospital setting now the tertiary is the third one it is a specialized highly technical level of health care most costly level of health care maybe certain type of lab which are very expensive and transplantation type of uh, health care which could be very expensive kidney transplantation uh, heart transplantation and so on therefore there are three type of health care delivery the primary you can go to your family doctor and get the appointment and you get your health care from there once the health care goes a more complicated area you go to the hospital doctor perform the assessment nurse do the assessment and diagnostic diagnostic procedures are performed there their medical treatment is followed and different preventive measures are followed and in terms of the complexity of their medical or diagnostic conditions now the tertiary becomes very very specialized highly technical mostly costly and very very uh, important similarly the provincial and territorial role the the local government the provincial or the territorial government's role is also very significant in canadian healthcare system each is responsible either the provincial or the territorial role these governments each is responsible for developing and administering its own health care insurance plan this government like for example uh, ontario we have a health card our health card is provided by the government of ontario and our province is responsible for developing and administering its own health care insurance plan once we go to other provinces like quebec and saskatchewan or british columbia they have their own um, health care plan but all people are insured for the quality health care but their health card and other their administering uh, administering uh, styles are different finances and plans health care services they administer all the finances the monetary and health care services what type of health care services we need they do the decision following the canada's health care act no matter which province they make their own policies and procedure but at the end of the day they have to everybody has to follow this canada's health care act this is the very important uh, document provincial or territorial health insurance programs it is given in page number 26 provincial and territorial health care insurance program please go to page number 26 and see how it works there are different the name of the provinces and their health care systems and health care insurance are given there in page number 26 now our discussion is a little bit shifting to the present health care challenges all the health care workers how they are facing the present health care challenges there are worker shortage see we need more and more doctors more and more nurses and even more and more support workers now 
because the workers are shortage. Aging population. Canadian population, it is the statistic shows that more than half of Canadian population is aging very soon. That's why we need more and more. Aging population, aging of healthcare worker, those experienced healthcare worker, they are getting old age. They are in their old age. And long waiting list for surgery, when people have different surgeries, they have to wait for so long, maybe one year, sometime even two years, depending on the degree of emergency. And certain diagnostic tests are also there and medical procedure, it is a long waiting time. Certain diagnostic procedure takes two to three months and medical procedure also takes longer period of time than even we expect. Long waiting time for long-term care facility. See, after people get the treatment in the hospital, and these people are supposed to go for the long-term care facility, but all the long-term care facilities, they don't have any more spaces now. Therefore, the patients in the hospital, they are waiting to be transferred into the long-term care facility. This is the reality of present. Increasing cost of care. Now, we may not know how much we are paying for our health care, but the government has to pay that amount for the medication and for the, for the doctors and nurses, they have to uh, pay for that. And for this um, cost, every day the cost of health care is increasing increasing and increasing. Therefore, government is also working on how to make the cost effective healthcare system. Maximum healthcare, quality healthcare, uh, how to give the quality healthcare to the people and how to make it cost effective. Now, what is the trend of Canadian healthcare system now? Now the trend goes the first from the very beginning, the health status of the people in the community, preventing the illness and injury. The first point of Canadian healthcare system begins from our home. How to prevent the illness? How to prevent the injury? Once Canadian, they are conscious about preventing the illness and injury, it is a great support for Canadian healthcare system. It is the great support for Canadian healthcare workers. It is the great support for the Canadian government, the, the provincial, territorial, or the federal government, because they are arranging all the financial cost for our treatment process. Therefore, I am introducing something interesting and new thing, health promotion. This is the principle Canadian healthcare system follows, health promotion. Once you are fit and fine, you are doing good physical exercise, you are eating healthy diet according to Canada's food guides. Because of those things, you are being healthy and this is called health promotion. Health promotion are the strategy that improve or maintain the health. Once we are able to maintain the health and our independence, it is a big support for Canadian healthcare system. Another is disease prevention. How can we prevent the disease? Disease prevention. As we already discussed about, prevention is better than cure. We have to prevent the disease. That is the strategy that, that prevent the occurrences of the disease or injury. So home care. Home care is very important because Canadian hospitals, there is a short hospital stay nowadays. The hospital has become very, very short short period of staying place there. Hospital cannot accommodate 
many people there is a limitation in hospitals so home health after the majority of the time clients patients they stay in the hospital for a short period of time and they go to hospital as outpatient not inpatient inpatient means those who stay in the hospital outpatient means on the same day they return to their home and maximum care is encouraged to provide at home and when there is a home care our role as a support worker is even more important and alternative healthcare practices are also followed in canadian healthcare system let's focus on home care home care is a community based care provided to the client we do not say patient who are at home we say them client it is established partly to save money to save money and partly as a result of the technological advances patients are sent home sooner following the hospital procedure as we um, already talk about it patients are the hospital stays of the patients are minimized as soon as possible and they are sent to the home because there are so many technological services the the healthcare agencies are providing the client at their own home home care health is home care is health care and support services provided to people provided to people in their places of resident they can get those health care facility in the places of their resident means where they live it's their home most common community based service it is called the it is called the most common community based services health care services in the community publicly funded home care programs are available now the government has different health care organization which is funded by the public by the people of canada publicly funded home care programs are available for the people in need and support workers provide must support services for the home care remember our job as a personal support worker this is very significant area of work maximum client in canada they want to stay at their home in the place of their own resident and they want to get the care how home care is governed and delivered the page number 29 is discussing about that in this page number 29 what is being discussed there so home care how home care is governed and delivered the assisting the client's need home care is governed and delivered determining the client's eligibility for the government sponsored professional professional and support services if the people are qualified for the government services they are provided those health care services at home the uh, people are coordinating and monitoring the home care services provided by the private or non profit agencies which are the government agencies providing information and referrals to other long term care services again providing placement services to assisted living facilities and extended care facilities known in some provinces as the long term care facilities when the home care facility goes to more problematic condition when the client is no longer able to stay at home very safely they are sent to the long term care homes in the nursing homes but not in the hospital hospitals are only for the acute care for the certain short stay um, treatment process they are taken to hospital otherwise they are stay staying at home or long term care or nursing home etc home care services 
and during the home care services, our role as a personal support worker is very significant and we are giving them personal care services. We are preparing their breakfast. We are giving them shower. We are uh, giving them all the necessary services, even um, home care services. There we are giving them all the services mentioned in the nursing care plan of their care plan and other home support services. We go for their, uh, their groceries, we go to buy their medications, sometimes we take them to the public park, we do the client's laundries and etc. All these belong to the home support services. Nursing and professional services. Nurses are visiting the clients in the home care setting and PSWs are giving services to the clients. So in hourly basis, PSWs are working in the home care setting and nurses are visiting in those clients' home. Support for instrumental activities of daily lives. Instrumental activities of daily life means all the activities that are performed at home, personal support worker, they have to do. They have to they have to buy the grocery for the client. They have to do the laundry of their clothes and they have to clean the house, prepare breakfast, prepare meal or lunch or dinner. Every As per needed, we are working as a support worker, which is called instrumental activities of daily livings. Volunteer services and the friendly visiting can be provided by anyone who meets the volunteer criteria. Even the government agencies and the public health care services, they are making the arrangement for the volunteer criteria. For the volunteer, they are very, uh, they are most of the time, they are not paid. They are just working for supporting the clients and they are the volunteers. Thank you for your patience. Please read this chapter two uh, with your textbook and the lecture together. You will understand more by that. Thank you. Thank you for your patience.